The next set of reactions that we want to talk about are nitration and sulfonation. But before we talk about the chemistry and the mechanism of these reactions, I thought I would just orient you uh, in terms of why these reactions are important. And it turns out that both of them are important on a, a, actually on a massive scale, both in terms of uh, use in society and obviously then the economic impact of these two processes. So let's start with nitration. Nitration gives rise to what are called nitro aromatics, aromatic rings that are substituted with a nitro group. And millions of tons of nitro aromatics are produced every year. I mean, just think about what mi a million ton, uh, million tons is. Um, it's really an astonishing uh, amount of a chemical to be produced. And one of the biggest uh, ones that, that's made um, every year is nitrobenzene. So this is a, you know, as simple as you can get. It's just benzene substituted with a nitro group. Um, and there are a number of uses of nitrobenzene itself, uh, but uh, something like 97% of all nitrobenzene produced every year goes to the production of aniline. So this is done with a simple hydrogenation, just uh, hydrogen gas with a catalyst that reduces the nitro group to an amino group. And so if you have a benzene with an amino group coming off, that's called aniline. Now, these types of compounds are also very important, and this overall transformation of nitrating and then reducing is one of the best ways by far to introduce an NH2 group onto an aromatic ring. And so you're going to find that important um, as we go through um, the synthesis of, of benzene uh, type of compounds. But aniline itself, uh, since so much is produced, is, is very important, um, and it's used in many contexts, for example, it's used to make rubber, explosives, pharmaceuticals, dyes, and pesticides. Okay, so um, <clears throat> nitrobenzene also has um, applications as well. Um, and I just pulled this uh, off of Wikipedia because it, I thought it was actually somewhat humorous. So nitrobenzene is actually used to mask some of the unpleasant odors that you find in things like shoe and floor polishes and, and other types of um, chemical-based uh, products. And then if it's in a highly uh, pure form, it's referred to as oil of myrbane. Um, and this has been used as an inexpensive perfume for soaps. Okay, that all sounds well and good, but then just below that, uh, we find this statement, which is that nitrobenzene is highly toxic and readily absorbed through the skin. So you might want to actually check the ingredient list on some of the products that you're using. Okay, so just one other uh, a circumstance where we find a nitro aromatic. Uh, this is a very important um, antibiotic, antibiotic called chloramphenicol. Um, and you can see the nitro group right here. And this is just a um, molecular model um, of this uh, molecule here. And that is the nitro group right there with the nitrogen attached to two oxygens. Okay, so chloramphenicol is used to treat some um, pretty nasty uh, bacterial infections, including things like meningitis, plague, cholera, and typhoid fever. Now, it's not actually used um, as the first line of defense because it has a number of very serious side effects. Um, and so if it is used, it's used um, for as short a time as possible. Um, but due to the rise of, anti, uh, of bacterial resistance to a number of uh, the common antibiotics, there's been renewed interest in this molecule um, as an antibiotic. Okay, so that's nitration. Uh, the next um, thing that we're, we're also going to talk about is uh, sulfonation of aromatics. So this will give rise to um, what are called aryl sulfonic acids. So aryl just meaning any aromatic. And I show here specifically benzene sulfonic acid. So as the name implies, these uh, molecules are acidic, actually quite acidic. Um, and so what you'll find is that they can readily ionize to give their conjugate bases, which are then called sulfonates. So this is benzene sulfonate. And so um, a lot of times where you'll see these compounds are either in the deprotonated form, so they'll be like sodium sulfonates, or they might be derivatives as well. So uh, sulfonation is massively important uh, economically. And uh, one of the uh, areas that we uh, find these molecules uh, is in surfactants. So these are going to be soaps, basically. So I show here a molecule, sodium dodecyl benzene sulfonate, right? So this whole big long greasy chain is the dodecyl part, there's the benzene and there's the sodium sulfonate. And this is actually the major component in many laundry detergents. And so this is actually produced uh, in billions of kilograms per year. 
And again, just contemplate the size of that number and, and how much a billion kilograms of a chemical would, uh, would be. Um, and it's really quite astonishing. The other uh, area that we find um, sulfonation being important is in the uh, preparation of a number of drugs which are collectively called sulfa drugs. And so the sulfa uh, specifically actually refers to this derivative of a sulfonic acid, which is called a sulfonamide. So one of the oxygens of the, the sulfonate has been converted into an amine, and so that's a sulfonamide functional group. Um, but it, it is a clear derivative of a sulfonic acid. And so I show one of the major sulfa drugs here, which is celecoxib, uh, more commonly known as Celebrex, uh, which was one of Pfizer's most um, successful drugs uh, with uh, profits measuring in the billions. And this is actually a non-steroidal um, anti-inflammatory drug, or an, an NSAID, right? Um, and so this would be an alternative to uh, something like ibuprofen. Okay, so nitration and sulfane uh, and uh, sulfonation massively important. Let's find out now uh, how we can actually prepare these functional groups. Okay, so let's begin by talking about nitration. All right, so first we'll give the general reaction scheme. So there is our benzene. And what we're going to use as the source of the nitro group is nitric acid, HNO3. But as we saw before, by itself, this reagent isn't electrophilic enough to actually react with benzene. So we need something that's going to activate it. And in this case, what we're going to use is a strong acid, sulfuric acid. Okay, so nitric acid and sulfuric acid together will be enough to make this process happen. And so we will get our nitrobenzene out. Okay, so the question is, how do these two work in concert to make an electrophilic um, nitro source? All right, so we can talk about the mechanism. All right, so let's draw out the nitric acid. Right. So this is a little bit of a funny looking reagent. Um, we're going to draw some formal charges in there, but there we have it. Okay. And now it will be useful for me to put in the electrons on this oxygen because what we're going to do is to protonate that oxygen with the sulfuric acid, right? So there's our sulfuric acid, H2SO4, very acidic, and that's actually acidic to enough to donate a proton to the uh, that OH group of the nitric acid. Okay, so we'll push the electrons there. And now it's an equilibrium process, but uh, when this uh, process goes forward, um, what we'll get to on this side then is this intermediate where now we've got our protonated nitric acid, okay? And so I've still got a positive charge there, but now I've got, I've got a positive charge on that oxygen. And you can probably see that that's an H2O um, positively charged, which is ready to, to actually serve as a leaving group, okay? So we're actually gonna go ahead and do that. And so uh, the uh, electrons on this oxygen, and I could just draw those in, all right, so one, two, and three, and four, five, six, oh, six total electrons, right? So one of those uh, lone pairs can uh, dump down, and then that's actually going to spit out um, that water molecule. So once that happens, it's also an equilibrium process, we're going to lose our H2O there, uh, and what we're going to be left with now is... NO2, okay, and so this is now a very electrophilic species known as a nitronium ion, nitronium ion, okay, very electrophilic, and um, it, it makes sense that it's electrophilic because it's a nitrogen that's attached to two uh, oxygens by double bonds, um, and which makes it uh, cationic as well, right? So this is a cationic reagent um, and a very electron deficient nitrogen center. So that makes it a very strong electrophile. Okay, so now we've generated our very powerful electrophile 
and we are now in position to do the actual EAS step with the benzene. So let's draw in our benzene. And now from this point forward, um, the mechanism will seem very um, familiar to you because all we're doing is using the pi cloud of the benzene and we're adding it to the electrophilic center of um, our electrophile, of our nitronium ion, right? So we'll add in the electrons there and we will kick up one of those um, lone pairs and that will give rise to our cationic intermediate. Okay, like this. Okay, and we still have a positive charge. Um, uh, actually, no, so we don't have that positive charge. Sorry about that. All right, the positive charge is going to be down here. Okay, and now I'm just going to draw one of the resonance forms. Um, we don't have to draw them all. We could also draw the, the sort of partial donor if we like, but this one will suffice. Um, and then all we need to do now is to regain that aromaticity that we've lost. And so in this case, um, we might as well use the um, anion that we generated over here. Okay, so the hydrogen sulfonate anion. So there it is, and this is going to then grab back the proton that it had donated. And if it does that, we will regain aromaticity. And there is our nitro group. Okay. And there we have it. That's our, our mechanism. Now, of course, the thing that is then left over is H2SO4, which is the thing we started with up here. And so this H2SO4 is a catalyst for this reaction. Okay. And then the second process that we want to cover is sulfonation. Okay. So there's a lot of similarities uh, mechanistically between these two, in my opinion. And so again, let's talk about the general scheme. We're going to have our benzene and our source of the uh, sulfonic acid is going to be SO3, sulfur trioxide. Again, on its own, it's not electrophilic enough to react with benzene, so we need a catalyst. And in this case, again, the catalyst is H2SO4, a strong acid. And if we mix those two together, we are able to sulfonate our aromatic ring. And there you have it. Okay, now, um, if you put H2SO4 and SO3 together, um, you'll actually um, see uh, a lot of, you know, it, it'll, it'll uh, be fuming, uh, it's called, or, or creating a, a, what looks like a white cloud. And so this is um, historically been called fuming sulfuric acid. Okay, so sulfuric acid with SO3 in it is fuming sulfuric acid. Okay, but um, it, it's not really that important that you remember that name. Okay, so how does this work? Well, it's very similar to the nitration. Okay, so again, the first thing that we have to do is to make an electrophile that's going to be potent enough to react with the benzene. So here's our sulfur trioxide. And again, we need to make use of that very strong proton donor, the sulfuric acid. Okay, so um, what we're going to do in this case is uh, to simply protonate one of the oxygens of the SO3. And when we do that, Right, so we could draw this uh, protonated intermediate um, in a number of different ways. It doesn't matter too much, but um, why don't we do it this way? Why don't we actually draw, draw those electrons coming from the SO double bond? I think that'll, that'll make this easier to, to understand. So what we'll do here is put the positive charge on the sulfur, just to remind ourselves that, that that's where the electrophilic site is. What I could do is actually draw a resonance form where the double bond, uh, the electrons from the oxygen are stabilizing that um, sulfur. So it would be an SO double bond and I'd put the formal charge on the oxygen. 
but it, I think it's better to do it this way because the sulfur is going to be the site that the benzene attacks. Okay, so now that we're at this point, this is now uh, a very strong electrophile. It's ready to go. And so now we're ready for the EAS step. And again, at this point, I think this is going to start to be very familiar to you. All right, so there's our electrophile. And the benzene is simply going to attack that electrophilic center, okay? And when we do that now, we're given this intermediate, there's our cation, and as you are now very familiar with, we need to deprotonate, regain aromaticity, and again, we're just going to go ahead and use the anion that, that uh, from the sulfuric acid, right? So the HSO4 anion is just going to grab its proton back, regain aromaticity, and when we do that, we have achieved our sulfonation. And of course, then the side product here is H2SO4, which again is the thing we started with to generate um, right here, generate the electrophile. And so again, H2SO4 uh, counts as a catalyst. So nitration, nitration and sulfonation, uh, very incredibly important um, to our society. Um, they're both conceptually related, I think, in terms of how the electrophiles are generated and that they both um, require H2SO4.